Hello and welcome. My name is Felipe Correa and I will be your host for today's episode of Aventura TV. And I have here with me a very good friend and Feng Shui practitioner, Holland Franklin, and we will be talking about water. Hi Holland, welcome. Hi there, thank you. What's the importance of water for us? Why do we need water so much? Well, in the, in the human body, which is 70% water, basically it facilitates almost every process in the body. So it's really important that you have enough water and th the right quality of water to facilitate all that. Otherwise, various systems in the body suffer. Mm -hmm. And apparently, most of us are walking around with a certain degree of, of dehydration. And it's at the root of a lot of medical problems. So that's the physical body. And then in nature, just about every process also is going to in water, involve water in some way. Obviously, our food production and forests and you mm -hmm. know, cities wouldn't exist and, and so forth. So you can think of water as basically central to just about everything in our lives. Uh, it's very interesting what you say because I, w I was doing some research the other day so because we were going to be talking about this. And I was reading that actually water is something that allows for a lot of things to happen inside the body that I wasn't even aware. And uh, it's, it's, it's so interesting because I hear and I talk to a lot of people and I see that nowadays people don't really drink that much water. Is it, is, is it okay if you don't drink water and just drink other, other kind of liquids? Well, you obviously are going to get some amount of hydration from it, you know, plus the fruits and vegetables that you're consuming. Other, otherwise, you wouldn't be here any longer. Um, there was, um, however, it, it's not optimal that the body processes water differently than if water has something in it, like, you know, tea, coffee, sodas, and so forth. There's a, a doctor who wrote a book a number of years ago called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. I've heard about it. Right. And mm -hmm. he also has a website, watercure.com. And he, he claims to have um, helped many people get over many chronic degenerative conditions using water alone by simply having them drink the right quantity of water for them. Is there an easy way to determine the right amount of water that you need to drink in your experience? Um, you know, I don't know what the medical test might be for that and so forth, but it's generally, I mean, the, the recommendation I hear the most often is whatever your body weight is, cut that in half. So if you weigh 150 pounds, half of that would be 75, mm -hmm. 75 ounces of water. And but that's assuming you don't have any kind of medical condition that mm -hmm. means that your body doesn't handle a lot of water well. But that would be, you know, a decent amount, you know, to help the body um, be normal, to normalize in every regard, and to detoxify, and, and to produce energy. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. And are all waters the same? Is, are all different kind of waters equal, or are there... Because you hear people that talk about reverse osmosis, they talk about distilled water, uh, tap water, uh, you know, mineral water, spring water. What, what's, what's with that? What's a good criteria, a tip that people can use to decide what kind of water they need to take? Well, there's two ways to think about water. You know, one is, you know, how many toxins does it have in it? You know, so in, in, that, in that way, you want to make sure that the water that you're drinking is as toxin-free as possible. Um, so reverse osmosis water, for instance, or distilled water, um, you know, has, you know, the water's gone through some kind of process where the toxins aren't there. Um, as opposed to, to tap water, which could have all kinds of things in it, you know, from, you know, pesticides to bacteria to um, uh, chlorine and fluoride and, and so forth. So you definitely want to make sure that there are either no toxins in the water or there's some way that those toxins are in and have been neutralized in some way. And I'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. um, the other way to look at it is how much vitality does your water have? And most people aren't used to thinking of it that way. You know, we think of the kind of the chemical constituents of water. But if you look at it the way a physicist might look at it, you know, water is, all, not all waters are the same. And it turns out that water, when it's what they call structured water or coherent water, has properties that 
are lost when water has either been subjected to electricity, such as in a reverse osmosis process, yeah. or it has gone through more than 300 feet of straight pipe. You know, um, water the way it naturally flows is in, you know, it's a meander. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's in waves. Mm -hmm. And when you straighten that out, you lose some properties, you know, that are very nurturing for us, you know, basically essential to life. So I would say, you know, first of all, if you have a choice, go for the most toxin-free, you know, water that you can find. And then, and oh, I should say also probably in glass because it can leach um, toxins from the plastic containers as well. That's one thing I wanted to touch with you because mm -hmm. that, when I, I, I mentioned before about that research I was doing, it's, uh, you always hear that you need to drink water out of glass because it leaches the, the bad chemicals out of the plastic bottles. And I, uh, why is that? Why is that so uh, dangerous? Uh, you know, I don't know all the chemical reasons. Um, BPA and various other um, chemical ingredients of, of plastics um, can interrupt your, your hormone system and are in, uh, apparently in, implicated in cancer and, and so forth. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, aside from the fact that plastic is very polluting, Mm -hmm. You know, and reusable containers like glass or even stainless steel sometimes, depending upon what the, you know, how it's been treated, mm -hmm. um, you are helping the environment and helping yourself you know, kind of at the same time. But, and people can easily do research on BPA and, and other toxins in, in plastics and find out, you know, how much uh, disruption goes on in our bodies due to that. Especially, you know, people are driving around with a hot plastic bot water bottle in their car, you know, mm -hmm. even more has been leached out. C can you tell us, uh, why don't you tell us that story that we, you were telling me the other day about the structure? Just give us a little bit of information of what structured water is and, sure. and, and tell us the story. Okay. Structured water is ba basically um, how the molecules in water relate to each other. And um, so it's the water that nature produces. Like if water, uh, is flowing down a stream, it's going over rocks, it's vortexing this way and that way. It comes out structured, um, which means that it has a, automatically a more neutral pH, which is healthier for us and mm -hmm. nature. And um, it also has a lower surface tension, which means it's more hydrating. It has a higher oxygen content, which automatically gives us more energy. So um, so the story, just to illustrate how how uh, structured water is useful out in the environment as well as for people. So there was a strawberry field, I assume there still is one, in, in Port Wainimi. And in 2010, what they did was they, um, in the poorest section of this field, they uh, installed uh, something that would allow structured water to flow onto that portion of the property. When you say poorest section, it means that was a section that had the lowest, lowest yields. yields and all that. Exactly. Okay. Right. And um, so they installed that. They didn't make any other changes, and it was um, over a period of 10 weeks. The strawberry plants greened up again. And this was the end of the season, too, so they weren't really expecting that it would produce more strawberries. Mm -hmm. But the plants greened up. They produced an extra crop of strawberries. The nutritional value, the BRICS reading, was a couple of um, numbers higher than what was normal for the better part of that strawberry field. Mm -hmm. um, the the fruit didn't rot, you know, the unpicked fruit didn't rot on the plants. Instead, it turned more like raisin and dried out. Uh, there, and they were able to cut back on the watering from once every day to once every three or four days. Wow. And, and produce, so they got all of that out of that one change, which was introducing structured water. Because you get these properties back, you know, that you lose if you're not, if it's not structured water, if it's, you know, municipally treated or, once again, the electricity has been affecting it. Okay, that, that's very interesting. Uh, I've also heard a lot about these machines, you know, Kangen water, I think it's called, or the ionized water, alkaline water. What, what about those kind of waters? Are they okay? Is it good? What, what's the deal with that? You know, I should underline that I'm not a medical practitioner in, in that sense, and but I have heard <coughs> differing opinions about them. You know, the idea of having more alkaline water because most of our diets are very acidic. 
you know, it's it's a okay. you know what our bodies are designed to to live in a certain pH range, and if mm -hmm. they get out of that range, then we get sick. It's just automatic, and most of us are running too acid. So a Kangen machine, you know, ha uh, creates um, alkaline water, and some people l love it. Other people say it's too much. You know, if you if your water is too alkaline, it's going to throw you out of balance in a whole other way. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, basically everybody has to be kind of savvy in their shopping and do the research about, you know, what really works, what doesn't work about any given system. And now so what happens if, uh, is there a way of structuring water? There, there are products that structure water, <laughs> absolutely. Those are available. Mm -hmm. um, and you can structure any kind of water? Any kind of water. You can, and it doesn't have to be water, you can structure other beverages as well. You Would know. it work with wine? Absolutely, wine. <laughs> yeah, there's less of a of a hangover, you know. Really? Yeah. Uh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you structure other things too. Okay, right. well, let's stick to water. <laughs> let's stick to water. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what would you say to your friends about the importance of drinking? water on top of every other thing because I noticed for example I just spent some time with my family and I noticed that my my stepfather would only drink some kind of juice and I never saw him in over a month and I never saw him drink a glass of water and that uh, it, 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 how can people do it so that they are aware of those things what would you recommend well, consuming more water obviously is going to help. And this interesting, this doctor who wrote the book, uh, Your mm. Body's Many Cries for Water, his claim was that it really didn't matter what kind of water you drank, that if you were getting more in sheer quantity of water, that it was going to benefit you, which I found very interesting. Um, I think, though, that people have to be motivated to drink more water. you know. And for that, I think they need a couple of things. One is to actually feel better from drinking it. Mm -hmm. And the other is, is to like the taste of it. So whatever it is that you find, you know, whatever water on the market or structuring water, whatever that's whatever is available to you, that is something you will naturally gravitate towards. Um, that would be the thing to do because basically, if we don't love it, most of us won't do it. That is true. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're drinking our colas and our coffee and so on because we're we're acidic and we're running out of energy. Uh -huh. You know, so we're going after things that are stimulants to give us more energy. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have a good water that will naturally make you feel more energized, you're going to drink it. Great. Well, I really appreciate all this information you had given us. I thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. And if people want to know a little bit more about what you do, how can they find out? They can come to my website, which is hollandfranklin.com. Mm -hmm. and find out more there and contact me through that as well. Okay, thank you very much for being here with me today. And I thank you for your presence with us here today and I look forward to a new show. My name is Felipe Correa and I will be seeing you again in Aventura TV. <laughs>